Alright, peace and greetings YouTubers. So Black Girls Rock 2016. I really enjoyed this specific award show because it's one of those award shows that gives acclaim and accolades to those within our community who do great work. And we don't always get to see that on television very often, but when it does happen, we always do such a great job of doing that. So that happens with like this show and like BT Honors and um, the NAACP Awards and sometimes the Soul Train Awards. And I, I really enjoy those specific award shows because it's all just so empowering and they're always presented with such a, a, an element of class and, and just overall there's a genuine art form of talent that's presented every single time it's not just anybody and everybody on stage doing anything they always make sure that when they honor these people and when they have the performance they get the best of the best and it's just so polished and so well put together so i really enjoy this um and i also like that it uplifts black women um to be honest in my opinion i've always felt that black women have the hardest out of everybody in society i'm not going to make this a competition of who has the worst struggle because i know there's going to be whoa what about the black men listen we have our struggles, and to be honest, black men, black women, we're still like way down here on on the societal status or whatever. But and, and that's subjective, okay? That's not what I believe, but that's how society sees things. But you know, with that, I feel that as, as black men, we've always had black women in our corner supporting us. They're oh, they've always been right there. Um, when it's the flip side, and when black women need us, sometimes I feel like a lot of us men have dropped the ball, and I think it comes from. The fact that so many of us are so misogynistic and we objectify women so badly that it's hard for us sometimes to fathom the idea that you know what they're actually struggling with a lot of things we need to be more supportive and protective like i'll be very honest i'm very protective of black women and the imaging around black women like i'm if you follow me on twitter you know i'm always cussing somebody out when they say something about any black woman that's a public figure i will fight you over michelle obama i will karate chop you over janet i will get you right together over anybody angela davis you better not say it goddamn like you know <laughs> so, I enjoy this specific award show, and like, what's cool about these shows is that you just feel so good about everything after they go off because they're so well put together. It's like you have this fuel to get through the rest of the work week and any kind of BS that's going to happen later on. Like, I'll watch something like this and I'm going to go to work tomorrow on a high. Like, somebody can cut me off on the freeway, I'm not even going to be mad. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm good. My music's on. I'm good. You know, I might even try my white co-workers gluten-free ginger snaps tomorrow. I mean, the last one ripped my feeling out, but I'll be in such a good mood, I might be willing to try another. Um, Tracy Elise Ross, or Tracy, Tracy Ellis Ross. I always mess her name up every single time. Um, that's the actress that's been in, like, any and everything. Lady from Girlfriend. She's on Blackish. Um, Diana Ross's daughter. She was the host. I think she was a great, um, host. She's, I, I enjoy her because... She's not afraid to be vulnerable, she's not afraid to be herself, and, and she's unapologetically herself. And I think that's how a lot of these celebrities should really start aspiring to be. Too many celebrities are so into themselves and how they look and what everybody thinks about them. And it's kind of like, sometimes you just need to be transparent. You know, I think the celebrities that, that, that people really enjoy the most are the ones that are just transparent, that are themselves, that make people feel that they're approachable. It wouldn't feel like, oh, this is that, oh my god, so-and-so's coming. We Everybody look the other way. Don't look at her because she said nobody's allowed to look in her direction. Like, nobody wants to be around people like that. So, I enjoyed her as the host. And that was a funny opening she had. I like that she kind of did the montage with all the different black women entertainers. So, like, the Shaka Khan and the Queen Latifah, um, the Beyonce and stuff like that. that. That was great. And then even with her doing the dancing, she's like, look, I'm not the best dancer, but I'm going to give you a little two-step and you're going to make, you going to work with it. So, I enjoyed that. And it was funny with the wigs, too. I died. But by the time they got the Janet wig, I was like, oh, they got the 87 Grammys wig on it. Okay. Um, what else? But um, So they honored a bunch of really great people. I didn't write down all the names of all the honorees because I'm going to be honest. I was back and forth between this and the People vs. OJ because I've been committed to that show for the last 10 weeks and I was not missing this finale. Um, <clears throat> but, I mean, they had some really great honorees. And what I like about the honorees is that they don't just honor people who are in music. They honor people who are doing a little bit of everything so people who are working in the community people who are business women people who are you know educating people who are working about imaging like this that's what makes it good it's not just the singers it's you know it kind of follows the same trend of something like a BT honors only they do it on a bigger scale because they honor more than five people and they go by it's not just there's not an age cut off they're honoring kids teenagers and I think that's empowering because for me, as someone who works with children, I'm always trying to inspire them and let them know that you can start doing things right now. You don't have to wait until you're 22 out of college to start your life or start what you want to do. If you feel that there's something that you want to accomplish and you have the tools to do it, you go for it right then and there. And as you continue to grow up and get older, you use the knowledge attained during your journey to make sure that you utilize and make the right decisions as you get older. So, um, I really enjoyed that. Let me get into the performances. So, 
they had a lot of um, really great performances. Um, the women really did it up on this one. So you had Jasmine Sullivan, she did Masterpiece off the Reality Check album. And that was a really great performance. I actually really enjoyed that song. If you ever get the chance to see Jasmine live, that's probably one of the highlights of her shows. It's, I, I couldn't get the whole essence of the performance through the TV feed because I hate how after everything went digital, you know, you had the microphone feed playing through one channel and then the music playing through another and then the audience playing through another. I always hate that because sometimes the sound is discombobulated. But Jasmine gave a really great performance. Um, and Jim, listen, Jasmine is going to find a way to put a run on every note. She hit the high note on that song and still tried to put a note at the peak of the high note. I was like, Jasmine, put the, put the run after the note. But I'm not going to tell Jasmine how to sing because clearly she doesn't need help. Um, but I really enjoyed her and it was kind of dope that she had like the, the dancers that were all different kinds of body types and everything. So the song Masterpiece is a very motivating song that I think is it's empowering to everybody. A lot of men are going to try to act all hoopla and holler oh, no, I'm, just, I'm not down with that, you know, that ain't uh, da, 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 da. This is for chicks and stuff. But I feel like that song is relatable to anybody. Um, but, you know, specifically for black women, but it's relatable to anybody. Um, Brandy. Brandy, Brandy. Brandy also performed. She performed her song, Begging and Pleading. And she gave a really dope performance. And she gave a good visual. It was very theatrical. You know, she had like the set and it was kind of like the juke box joint. It made me think of Sugar Baby from Color Purple with the uh, sister. Like, I, I thought of that. Um, but it was good. I, I think she lowered the key like, uh, like two or three keys lower. But it was good because Brandy has a good bottom. So she lowered that key a bit so she could really play with the song. And I always say that with a lot of performers when it's live performing. Even if you recorded a song at the top of your range, you don't have to perform it the same way. You drop it down a key or two, you can really play with a song and have fun with it. But the problem is all these entertainers, they want to record the song at the top of the range and then, you know, they already did the recording in 30,000 different takes. So then for some reason they think they're going to be able to pull it off live and then it's a disaster. Brandy was like, you know what, and honestly Brandy probably would have been able to do it at the original key anyway because she can do that. But she was like, no, nah, let's lower it down a bit because, you know, I want to roll on the floor and stuff. So. It was good. It was dope. Brandy, that was an excellent performance. Um, who else before? Let me see here. Um, oh, my phone's tripping. Oh, what's it? What's, is her name Andre Day? Andrea Day? She's the. She was getting on everybody's nerves like a month ago on Twitter when she was talking about she was Greek and she wasn't trying to paint the black side. Now so she's black again. But um, she sings the um, the, the I Rise Up song. I always hear it on the radio. It's a really nice song. But she had a great performance. Like she has a good um, tone. Like, and she's really good at control. Um, when she, is it Andre, is it Andrea Day? Andrea Day? Andre Day? Y'all know who I'm talking about. She's also, she was in that commercial with Stevie Wonder and some of the kids back during like the Christmas holiday season. But she gave a really great performance. And it was a really, you know, motivating, inspiring song. That's the other thing. They make sure that when they get these performers on these kind of shows, that all the content is going to be very motivational. So that was dope. Um, they also had Marsha Ambrosius, uh, Corinne Bailey Ray, and this woman, Imani Azuri, perform. I'm going to be real honest. I was a little nervous when they said Marsha Ambrosius, only because as much as I like her and I do like her from Floor Tree and, and I like her solo stuff, but sometimes to me, some, sometimes she be sounding like, man, she be sounding like she eating a hot slice of pizza when she do them runs. And I'm like, what are you, you know, she, oh, 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 oh. I'm like, mm. I just always remember she did the Anita Baker tribute at one of these award shows and I just had to look at her. I mean, it was an impromptu thing because that's when, um, I think Anita Baker and Jill Scott had some kind of falling out during the rehearsal and Marsha came in last minute. So she didn't really get time to prep, but man, sometimes she sounded like she eating a hot slice of pizza. Just, <laughs> but she she did really good. Um, that was a really great performance, and they actually they they kept it together. So I appreciate that. It was a great performance. I like that. Um, Corinne Bailey Ray's back out. You know she's dealt with a lot. You know like the death of her husband and everything like that. But it's dope that you know once again black women you know they resilient. Um, Monica performed. I actually need to buy Code Red. That's the only Monica album I don't have, so I should probably go buy Code Red. Help support Monica. Um, she was. I, I told y'all when I on my BET Honors video, my, Monica looks good in person. Like Monica's all kind of fine. And but anyway, she did a really great performance. I've never even heard that song, but I liked it, so I guess that'll make me buy the album. She brought her um, daughter out. Daughter was a little shy, but you know what it made me think of? It made me think of back in the day when like um, Whitney Houston used to bring Bobby Christina out on the stage. When she was, especially on like the My Love Is Your Love tour when they would do um, My Love Is Your Love. And you know, she'd get the mic to Bobby Christina and Bobby, you know, my name's Bobby, my name's Bobby Christina and I've got to say, clap your hand. Like, it just made me think of that. So that was kind of dope. Um, yo, and then Gladys Knight performed. I said, okay, all right, Gladys. Speaking of Gladys and Kelly Rowland, let's just go ahead and we, let's just bring it up. 
I am convinced that somewhere down the line, Kelly Rowland and Gladys Knight are some kind of related. If you go on YouTube and you look up Gladys Knight and the Pips performing Daddy Can Swear I Declare on Soul Train, if that is not Kelly Rowland in 1974, like straight up everything looks exactly the same. The only difference was they had like a different, their teeth are different. But when I tell you that Gladys can be Kelly Rowland's mom, like yo, check that out. But another thing, speaking of moms, what was funny is like when they were honoring Gladys, and Gladys was doing her speech, and she said something about, um, you know, the woman that was in her corner supporting her because nobody wanted to hold her trophy. I think she was trying to say that she was the only black kid that won some talent show and the white kids didn't want to hold the thing for her. But she talked about her mom holding a trophy. Or holding a trophy. So as soon as she said her mom, the camera pans to Iyana Van Zandt. And for a second, because I was, I don't know, maybe because I was laying down, I thought that that was Gladys' mom. I'm like, damn, Gladys' mom's still alive? God is good. Like, dang, and she looked, she looked good. And then I realized it was Iyana. I was like, oh, well, just playing, just playing. But, um, Gladys was great. Um, she also performed like a quick 20 seconds of that new song she has. It's not really as new, but she has a music video for it. I used to always see it on VH1 Soul or now BET Soul. Um, so that was dope. Gladys is a legend. Gladys can do no wrong with me. Um, probably one of my favorite vocalists from the 70s, I definitely would say. Um, Gladys is just excellent. Um, yeah, but Kelly Rowland, you should definitely do Gladys in a biopic if, if you get that opportunity. Kelly Rowland was fine, too, tonight as well. Kelly Rowland's gorgeous. Like, everybody that was there looked nice. Everybody was just nice looking. That's what makes it good. Um, everybody's so presentable and everybody understands. Like, that's the thing. When you're trying to uplift and empower your own, everybody has to be invested. So when everybody's not invested and folks show up acting like fools and looking like anything, that's what takes away from the prestige of the show. But everybody knew what was up with this one. So I, I was really glad. I got I told you my, my issue about Monica's um, little glam squad people sitting next to me at BET Honors and an old boy had a sweatshirt on so he killed all my camera time. I ain't getting none. But um, anyway... Uh, oh, Lauren Hill performed. Listen, I miss Lauren. But by the time uh, Lauren Hill came on, People vs. OJ was coming on. And plus, last time I saw Lauren Hill, she was three hours late and then cussed us out for being mad. So I was like, I I'll get to her. But I did flip and I caught a piece of it. She was doing Lost Ones. But I don't know if she was doing the singing. I just kept seeing her doing rapping. But the band sounded great. Um, and I mean, she was energetic and she was fun for what it was. Um, it would be nice if she would finally come out with a new album at some point, you know, Lauren, I, I, I mean, I'm a little disappointed every time I see you live, but I would like to see you come back out when you, when you can, if, if you don't mind, if you're not too busy. Um, those are all the performances. I'm trying to think of all the people they honored. They honored, like, Rihanna Shonda Rhimes. They honored the, the, the actress she plays in Hunger Games. I, I'm gonna mess up her name. Amandala, um, Stenberg, Maya Penn, uh, the Black Lives Matter people. Um, and, and, uh, who else did I skip? Um, dang, the lady from The Walking Dead. Um, what's her name? Denai. It starts with a G, that's the last name. I messed up the last name. Forgive me, y'all, I'm sorry. Um, but no, I really enjoyed this specific show. Oh, and then Hillary Clinton was there. Um, it was interesting on that part because it was interesting watching the facial expressions of the crowd because a lot of the crowd was just looking. Like, you know, it was almost like you, uh, you're the guest marching band at an HBCU homecoming football game. Like, <laughs> To go on back in the day, like, okay, so when I went to Howard, I'll just say this, I love Howard to death, that's my school, but I never thought we had the best marching band out of all the HBCUs. Like, I used to always feel like the Florida A&M would come, or Hampton, I know I said that out loud, forgive me, or like, Morgan State, or um, North Carolina a they would just blow us out of the water every time, but I would, we would all be in the halftime section just, psh. no, they, this is whack, they're not even, psh. they ain't even, what is this crap, like, that's what it felt like, that's what the crowd looked like with Hillary, a lot of them were like, uh, because even Rihanna's facial expression, I said, dang, Rihanna can't even vote in America and she don't even like Hillary. Dang. Um, and, yeah, so that should be interesting. Um, a lot of people felt some kind of way they felt that Hillary was using that as an opportunity to just promote herself during, you know, her election campaign. Um, I'm not really Team Bernie or Team, Hi team Hillary. I'm not really on either team. I'm just kind of chilling and, until I figure out. Because, hell, I'm already still in rehab with the fact that the Obamas are going to be out of office. So, you know, I'm not thinking about Bernie or Hillary at the moment. Um... I don't know, I'll, I'll kind of make my decision later down the line. Um, but anyway, share your thoughts on Black Girls Rock. It's great that we always have these kind of celebratory events. Um, and the good thing was I didn't see all the hateration in the past like I've seen before. Because I know the first few years, I, white people would lose their minds. And then I see white girls rock trending right after. I didn't see none of that. So white people, I'm glad y'all finally understand that celebrating black accomplishments is not a racist exclusion of white people. So I thank you for, for, for finally getting that. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, 
Anyway, I'm out. Subscribe. Let me know what you think about the show. If I skipped anything, add it in the comment section. I'm out.